there's certain things that still tickle me in life. And my policy is about, you know, I have a strict policy about growing older and growing up. Succumb to the former because it beats the hell out of the alternative, but resist the latter. So for that reason, certain forms of juvenile, sophomore humor still tickle me. Chief among them is bathroom humor. I admit it. Okay, I admit it. There's just something intrinsically funny about certain biological functions going awry. Every person's body has at least three major avenues of substance ingress or egress, right? And sometimes they're under our full control. Sometimes they're not. It's the egress part that gets you. Because of long-established tribal taboos, there are only a few socially acceptable places for seeing to such functions. Woe betide the person who has a misfire, okay? Now, the importance of this is impressed upon us from a very early age. It takes a long time to get it right. Some of us take longer than others. Early incidents where mistakes were made tend to leave a lasting impression. Just ask Sigmund Freud. He built an entire career out of talking about this kind of stuff. Such regrettable episodes and the embarrassment that comes with them serve to guide our future behavior and help us fit into the sometimes complicated matrix of human social interaction. Okay? So, now, enter humor. Humor, at its heart, contains two basic elements. Surprise... And cruelty, trust me on this, if you don't believe it, spend 10, mil- to spend 10 minutes watching America's Funniest Home Videos. 99% of them feature something hurtful happening in a surprising way. Well, you know, it should, it, it's really no, it should not be a surprise because half the time um, you, can ta- you can take one look at what's about to happen and, and what's going on. You know what's about to happen because stupid, painful things often, hap- often happen at the end of stupid, irresponsible reactions uh, actions, and the audience sees it coming. Anyway, but bottom line is, Watch the videos. It's all about surprise and cruelty. Um, People who are victims in such videos often suffer horribly. But because, you know, in the aftermath they live, at least we think they do, the video doesn't always make it clear whether they live well, we get to laugh. Just try not to see if you can do it. Surprise and cruelty. Had the victims died, of course, we wouldn't react in the same way. Instead of laughing out loud at such unfortunates on television... We'd go find the video on some underground underground website and laugh at them there. Now, take the aforementioned social taboos and imperatives involved in bathroom training, cross it with the concept of humor, and what do you get? Bodily functions happening at inappropriate times or in inappropriate places, or the results thereof being left out in the open for people to find, preferably in such a way as to mortally embarrass someone. Ew. But funny, right? Sometimes. Now, I'd like to be able to say I'm a morally superior human being and so never laugh at the misfortune of others, bathroom related or otherwise. I'd be lying. TV news people are particularly infamous for their propensity to chuckle, giggle, or guffaw at, in the face of tragedy. And folks in my profession like to say that journalists sometimes laugh in response to human suffering only to keep from crying. Don't believe it. The truth is we laugh because we're a bunch of a holes. Okay, now. Since I'm in confession mode, I will allow as how I once participated in playing a joke on a TV anchor that involved some bathroom humor. Our station had just received a CD filled with sound effects. Our audio director noticed that one of the tracks was labeled Digital Vomit. So naturally, he played it to see what it was all about. I got to tell you, this thing was incredible. Now, why anybody would think a TV station would need such a track is a mystery, but the way we had it, it had been sent to us. It was Fine. I picture someone getting violently and copiously ill onto a tile floor. The recording was so crystal clear. The splash sounded as if it were echoing off the close tiles with such realism. You couldn't help but glance down at your own shoes to make sure none had gotten on you. So what do you think we did? What could we do? During a commercial break of our newscast, we piped the track to our anchor via the audio feedback button lodged in his ear numerous times. After first telling him that a viewer had recorded a comment that he needed to hear, the results were spectacular, right? Hey, Bob, here's what this viewer thinks about you, and then we play it. He almost wasn't able to compose himself in the short time remaining before the commercial break ended and the red camera light came back on. Yes, this stuff doesn't, uh, does happen. Okay. So I make that point to say that I'm no prude. I love a good laugh, okay? Now, once upon a time, movies completely ignored such bodily functions. No one ever did number one or number two on screen, ever. Not on screen, not off screen. You just never heard about those functions in movie, on movie shows and in, in television shows. Okay? Just nobody, uh, TV characters and movie characters were freaks of nature who simply never had the need to do anything like that. 
Now, sometimes to advance a storyline, illness had to be written into the script. But any scenes involving nausea and its usual outcome were executed in such a way as to have the action take place off screen, usually without even so much as a sound effect. You know, the ac- actor slaps his hand to his mouth, dashes off screen, point made, got it, you know, clean efficiency. Sometimes the emissions were so noticeable that you had to wonder what's going on. I remember watching the movie Marooned when I was a kid, where the viewer spends two hours observing three Apollo astronauts who are crammed into a tiny capsule stuck in orbit. Not once did any one of our heroes ever have to take care of any bathroom business, you know, and I wondered about that. As, and did anyone but me notice that neither the Jupiter 2 of Lost in Space nor the Starship Enterprise on Star Trek had any bathrooms? Did anybody notice that? Okay. So for a few years ago, a movies began making up for decades of ignoring the issue. The trend started dramatically after Linda Blair's performance on The Exorcist, who amongst us will ever look at pea soup the same way again. By the way, that's exactly what was used. And after that, there was no major rush to bring on the gross. Perhaps directors thought the final word on the subject had been said. So the movement toward embracing the bathroom moved slowly. But move, it did. And in the years since, there have been good examples and bad ones. Good examples, okay? The baby Ruth scene in Caddyshack. If you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. Hey, it's just a baby Ruth, no problem. The bathroom scene in Dumb and Dumber, which made me laugh so hard, I I hurt myself permanently. I I still walk with a limp. The cat spew scene in Madhouse, hysterically funny. If you've seen it, you know what I mean. I'll even say I could go with Mr. Hanky, the Christmas Pooh in South Park. The original appearance sent me into such paroxysms it prompted an asthma attack that nearly killed me, and that's only a slight exaggeration. Uh, But then the extra features section on the DVD took it several steps further in a skit that was only gross, not funny. And that's sort of where I'm going with this, because there are many, many, many other examples that are just plain yucky. Exploding man scene in Monty Python's Meaning of Life with apologies to Monty Python fans. Okay, that one's just Fifty Shades of Nasty. As was the toilet scene in Train Spotting. Very artistic and all that, but it put images in my mind that I would give cash money to unsee. Slumdog Millionaire, if you don't know the scene I'm talking about, you don't want to know, and trust me on this. Even simple rom-coms like Sex in the City now have to get on in on the act. Have you seen the first Sex in the City movie? movie? Charlotte did what in her what? And I'll never go to Poughkeepsie again. And if you know why I say that, then you've seen the movie and you know what I'm talking about. It was bad enough that my wife, it was my wife's turn. It was bad enough that it was my wife's turn to pick the movie that weekend. And therefore, I got dragged to, chia, to see a chick flick. Having to sit through Charlotte's mortification so added to the enjoyment I was anticipating. Of course, I later got my revenge by making the bride sit through two submarine movies. And there have been many, 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 many other examples. I won't recount them all. But in recent years, it seems like the next director wants to outdo the one before, each trying to push the needle of the disgustometer another point higher. Those examples don't bother me half so much as the number of just casual, it's not a big deal scenes that take place in movie in bathrooms these days and settings doubling or in settings doubling for such when no bathroom is at hand like alleyways bushes car windows etc the camera just has to take us into the john with the characters so we can hear joe and fred chatting at the urinals complete with piddle noises right cue the sound effects clip piddle 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 hey joe piddle 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 how's it hanging etc and it won't go any further okay but let's just say really do we have to do this? And I don't know about you, but when I'm in the men's room, I really like to take care of what I came there to do and get the hell out. I don't talk to other people. I don't want them to talk to me. What I want them to do is focus on the task at hand and then move on and let me do the same, okay? I didn't come there to hang out with the boys in any sense of the term, all right? And at home, I've been known to run water in the sink to mask the sound of whatever I'm doing, all right? So why do movie directors who previously pretended that such bodily functions didn't exist, now have to wallow in them and bring us along with them. Okay, so Bride of the Bloviator and I are a couple of boring homebodies. We watch movies every week, typically four or five movies every weekend. In the course of doing so, we began to notice that we couldn't help, couldn't get through a weekend without having to see someone taking a piddle, making a duty, or ralphing up their lunch on screen. Not a week went by. Inevitably, at least one director amongst one, one of the movies we'd chosen would feel the need to take us there with little or nothing left to the imagination. This past weekend, we thought we'd finally broken the streak. After making it through four movies without having to know about anyone's fluids, 
But then we made the mistake of starting season six of Mad Men, which you, you we're just now catching up to that on Netflix. And if you haven't seen it, I won't spoil it for you. But suffice it to say that a character commits massive hurlage in a very public way. And that episode also gives us an on-screen piddle. So a tinkle and a vom in one sitting, but to be fair, it was a feature-length episode. So congratulations, Mad Men producers. Thanks to you. The Bride and I have now gone 22 straight weeks without missing our bathroom vom fix. And after this past weekend, it occurred to us that this is no accident. Hollywood has, in fact, come up with a new genre for all of us. And since they haven't seen fit to name it, we will. The Bathroom and Vomit Comedy to be known henceforth as the VOMCOM. Innovation, it's what makes America great. The Forest Car Show will continue after these messages.